Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another Behind the Bubble take. We have with us today Camilla Richards, our Senior Manager of Training and Quality here at Active Engage. Camilla, how long have you been with us? I've been with us for 12 years. 12 long years. Years. Going on 13 this month. Yeah. <laughs> so I should have just said 13. Congratulations. Yes. Yay. And Camilla, how did you come to join Active Engage? <sighs> the story. All right. So my roommate at the time uh, started working for Active Engage and she always came home so happy so fulfilled you know and at the time i was working a position where i spoke with very depressed people <laughs> um <laughs> yeah tr attempting to get money from uh, attempting to get money from you know terminal people uh was just not where i wanted to be in life right so she came home and i was like you know what I want to be just like you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be happy at the end of my day. So I made the move and I haven't looked back. Yes. And it's been 13 years. Yeah. So Camilla joined us as a chat agent, a mm -hmm. virtual sales associate at the time was the title. Yes. Um, and Gosh. learned the conversation. Yes. It was such a different company mm -hmm. um, almost 13 it years was a, ago. Yeah. It was a different, it was a different program yeah and you know now we're on the you know the browser and things before that we were on a program and yeah. that was an uh, adjustment in everything so yes, yes we've had many technological advances, advances <laughs> yes. innovation innovation for sure yes absolutely yeah. um the beauty of having your own development team is uh can't say enough so yes. so you work your way from chat associate through to team leader, yes. Um, eventually joining the training team, yes. And and then today, as we said, your senior manager of training and also quality. quality. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take training first. When we think about you know, because this is a very strange thing that we do. We mm -hmm. have unscripted conversations. So we have non-automotive people talking to our dealers, consumers online and building that relationship to move them down funnel and build the trust that encourages action, right? Yes. So how do we take non-automotive people? I, I remember sometimes we have people in class that did not know that Toyota made the Corolla. Yes. Um, <laughs> they come in all varying degrees of automotive knowledge, right? How do we take someone from there to being able to have a conversation that generates revenue for our dealers? We teach them about having a conversation with someone. We don't teach them right at the, off the bat about the vehicles really we don't focus on that we focus on the the human element you know asking questions to guide the conversation um sharing information as far as like the vehicle information that is knowledge like we have that at our fingertips we have we are able to search for that we're able to you know we have multiple resources right and it's a learning process and we don't expect people to just know all about vehicles right right off the bat it's it's a process we don't rush it great wonderful yeah because it's not a blind test it's not a memorization type test right yeah um and just like education has changed through the years with technology and people have gone through school learning how to research and find answers you know what I know that we have discussed and we find kind of funny today is some of the AI tools that have come out to have these chats um, on dealers websites they'll spit out a block of yes. words and number one, we know people don't like to read that much. <laughs> yes, that is too true. And number two, it's just shotgun, shotgunning facts that mm -hmm. may or may not hit. Yes. So you're absolutely right. That emphasis on how to have a conversation. And that's so important today, especially mm -hmm. with millennials, Gen Z, the more people are brought up on technology. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about some instances in class or in the training where 
you found there are holes in people understanding how to have a back and forth conversation? You know, people kind of expect you to respond whenever you say something. Okay. And we take a very like, okay, yes, respond, acknowledge the person, and then ask them a question because that kind of puts the ball in their court to respond to you. But that's always an interesting habit to break with, with people because they think, oh, I responded. You should respond as a customer. Right. With no question asked. With no question asked. <laughs> so that's, that's something that some people kind of have to get into the habit of. Yes. And once that happens, you kind of notice that you do that in your real life too. Yes. It's going gonna, it's gonna to translate and it's going to help you and it's going to work. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's funny, we hear from people who are like, the communication skills I learned in that mm -hmm. role have helped me personally, they've helped me professionally, right. whether here or other places. Um, and it is interesting when you pause a moment to reflect on how you communicate and, and when a conversation's running smoothly versus when it's not. And right. that's, that's the whole point. We want a smooth, good feeling, encounter with that dealer mm -hmm. in order for that consumer to be responsive when the dealer reaches out. So let me ask this question. Is it difficult to get contact information for a lead? Absolutely not. No. It is not difficult at all. So we're in an environment where everyone knows what chat is at this point. They know that, okay, in order for me to get this and that information, I may have to give my contact information. So they're already ready for that. So it really puts a focus on the conversation. Asking for the, the phone number and the email, yes, that is part of the job and you have to do that because that is the lead. However, everything else, they're going to they're gonna purchase because of your interaction with them. Right. That's exactly, that's always been our approach, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Every is, is every to, time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say every chat, every, every word? Every chat, every word, every time. Okay, now you have to <laughs> tell the story there. Oh my gosh, okay. So I was there when you did this, okay. by the way. I was on the floor as a VSA, okay, yeah. at the time. And you had like this eureka moment and you were like, you know what, you did a whole spiel. But all I really fully remember from the spiel <laughs> is that we've got to concentrate on every chat, every word, every time. And that just became our slogan we had posters we had painted like this, on the wall we hung it on the wall yeah. we like was like every chat everywhere and every time That's and it. it is to this day a bajillion years later <laughs> yes yes it's still the it's still the one yes <laughs> and it still works in every single situation i love saying that in every single class i love that thank you mm -hmm. uh, but it's true yes very um true. when a consumer is at home or at work as we know they are a lot of times mm -hmm. Having this conversation, every single word that you're putting back to them is meaningful. It holds weight. Exactly. And so an AI spitting out a block of a marketing brochure is not meaningful. It's not. It, it doesn't do anything to build that connection. Um, and we understand, coming from an automotive background, to dump hundreds of leads on a dealership team to follow up where those consumers felt nothing in that interaction. Mm -hmm. They dump their contact because whatever, they, they can put their phone on silent, they don't even have to have the phone ring, and they can delete an email pretty fast. Um, that is not providing value. Right. Providing them an opportunity where that consumer felt something, they felt acknowledged and heard, that's huge. Very. That differentiates this dealer from all the noise that's out there, all the unoccupied websites, the unmanned websites, we like to say. And so, yes, every single word that mm -hmm. we are using is critical. Yeah, I mean, and it, less is more in the conversation. Yes. You know, and it's always an interesting dynamic to get you know, new hires to understand that concept because they want to be like, they want to do everything that we say to do, right? Yes. And what that translates sometimes is a paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> kind of almost like the AI. Yeah. You know what I mean? AIs are just kind of staying yeah. in that first, you know, initial thing. Um, it's not about the block of information. You know what I mean? It's how you piece that block together and make it, I don't know, um, 
edible. Because yeah. I mean, if you're going through, as, imagine, a lot of people are on their cell phones, right? On a mobile device. It's got a small screen, unless you have like, you know, the pro whatever <laughs> from Apple. That's like a massive screen. But like, it's a small screen for the most part, right? Yeah. And what are they gonna do? Scroll for days yeah. with your block of information? Yeah. No. Like And are they gonna remember what was at the uh, top? Yeah, like <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna look for like words, like right. trigger words that you said that may have been what they were asking for. Right. They might not even get the exact thing that you were trying to say. Yes. They might not even notice that you asked a question. Right. You know, so short attention spans are a thing. It's a it's thing. It's a thing. Especially adult yes, <laughs> it is a thing. Yeah. So high level training, mm -hmm. we have these beautiful souls oh, who are so ready to connect with shoppers, mm -hmm. um, service and sales shoppers. So what does that outline look like day one, week one, week two? How do we take them through that? You said we focus on the relationship building mm -hmm. first. Yes. Okay, so our training initial training is a four-week process okay now I know that always sounds kind of like whoa chatting customer service four weeks that yeah. sounds so crazy please understand we did not start at four weeks we started I think at what one week and with all of the years of innovation and changes and updates we have moved to a four-week process because of the way that we have changed the training process. Yes. So first week is really concentrating on lecture, but not your normal lecture. This is lecture with games, gamifying things, because adults, as adults, I, I was very surprised by this, but we like to play. Yeah. We like <laughs> games. We want to we want to win something above that person. We're very competitive when it, when it comes to the games. So we've gamified a lot of the assessments. Um, it's not so, you know, super strict. Mm -hmm. We are getting them on the console, which is our, which is our product. Um, we get them on the, on the console within the first couple of days. They're seeing what they're gonna do. They're monitoring other people that are doing the job already. So they're getting an idea. Like, we're just kind of triggering little things with them, you know? Yeah. And going into the second week, we are all forgetful as adults. So going into the second week, what I expect for you to know is just the basics, the guidelines, the some procedures. Yeah. Now, throughout your entire career, you're going to always know about the procedures because it's something that we always talk about. Second week and third week, by the end of the second week, we're on real chats. You're talking to a real customer, okay? You're All getting, alone? No, no. <laughs> we are not leaving you alone. <laughs> you are with someone for the entire four yes, weeks. Yes. Okay. So you are getting feedback from a subject matter real expert. Real time. Real time. They're on a call with you. Yes. They're guiding you through the whole process. Now, remember, we do not use scripts, okay? Right. We do use guidelines. We use. We teach you how to have a conversation with it's a customer. A flow. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the flow. Perfect. Chat flow, you know? Yeah. So uh, we do that second week, third week, and then going into the th end of third and fourth week, we talk about our very specific products, like different things that we may have started using in the console, like yes. new products, which is just a little bit deviated from the run-of-the-mill everyday things that you might have to do on the Such chats. as my drive, yes. service scheduling, yes. these other products. Yeah, yes. especially products where you have to use a different program or a different company's system. Yes. And so it's a lot of system learning, so of course it's a lot more technical. Sure. So by the fourth week, we know, we've established a relationship that we know, mm -hmm. hey, you are great, like you can learn this technical yeah. stuff, the super technical stuff, not just yeah. conversations, not yeah. just like be having a personality in a chat, yeah. but doing the P's and Q's, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I recall the way that we kind of, uh, because I think a lot of our folks come from a support background where they're used to giving the answer, answer. Mm -hmm. right? And so to kind of break that mindset and we teach wiggle room, always yes. use wiggle room because yes. we understand the dealer has to deliver on whatever it is we're saying. Mm -hmm. um, we give them an overall education of 
you know, shoppers tend to go to the OEM websites, the third party websites, and by the time they land on that dealer's website, they're ready for action. Right. And so I think, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, that is what that kind of background education, understanding the shopping funnel, which mm -hmm. is also a bazillion years old, mm -hmm. but understanding that enables our C's, our customer engagement experts, to dive right in. Do you have a trade? What is your time frame, mm -hmm. right? And do you find that these newbies, these green peas to the auto industry, do they struggle with answer, asking those questions? Yes. Sometimes they f might feel like, oh, this is so aggressive. Yeah. Like they're scared to ask things like, do you have a down payment or a trade-in to put towards a purchase because it's talking about money. Right. Or they, they might be afraid to talk about the price that the dealer has listed right. on on their site, right. you know what I mean? So it's kind of like breaking that too because yes. we have to explain to them that this, the customer wants you to ask that. They, sometimes they're super proud of their trade-in. Yes. They want to tell you, hey, I have only 10,000 mi 10, miles on this trade, it's yes. worth everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're curious about what it's worth, things like that. So if you don't ask that question, it doesn't really broach that topic with the customer. Right, doesn't open up the conversation. Exactly, and that's what we're here for. Right. We're, we wanna build that conversation, we wanna get as much information so that the dealer can complete, they can get a complete lead where, right. you know, they're barely asking questions, they're just coming in and yeah. buying the car. Do the thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. So thank you for the training overview. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna come back and be with Camilla again to talk about the quality process and systems that we have in place because as you said some of these questions are uncomfortable especially when people start out so how do we ensure that the right questions and the right conversations are happening because certainly as we know just sending a lead is not proof of success so camilla thank you so much for your time mm -hmm. and we will see you again soon and behind the bubble